Hello and welcome to This is Science, ChicagoParent.com's monthly series in which we do a science experiment or demonstration that you can do at home with your kids. When I first started this series, people started asking me if I was going to blow things up. Well, today we're not quite going to blow things up, but we are going to make matchstick rockets that I am assured is perfectly safe for you to do at home with your kids. We're here at Washington Junior High School in Naperville with Laura Colon, who is a teacher. You've been here for how many years? 13 years. 13 years. And behind us are Charlie Oven and Joe Gorski, two eighth graders, who are going to be helping us uh, with this experiment and helping us explain this experiment. Okay. So what are we doing here? OK, so the matchstick rockets have pretty simple supplies. You need paper clips. Mm -hmm. You need a match book with paper matches, which you can get at any local store. Mm -hmm. uh, we need longer matches to make it safe at home so that you're not burning your fingers. And those are also available um, at uh, hardware stores. Mm -hmm. A beaker of water to extinguish the flames. Okay. And then if you're using a table or anything else, a sheet of foil will protect the table from getting the burn marks. Okay. Uh, and then you also need a needle. A needle to okay. make the thrust chamber. This is just a regular sewing it's needle. It's just a regular sewing okay. needle. You can also I can't use, pick up. yes, okay. it's, um, you can also use a safety pin as well. Okay. The, the only thing that doesn't work is a pin with a head at the end because it doesn't allow it to lay flat. Okay. And then so of course of you need stuff. safety goggles or glasses to keep you safe. Okay. So if you have bad eyes, you're perfectly fine. You don't need to buy anything else. Right. <laughs> right. Okay, so okay. to start out, you need to take foil, and I'll let you do this as we go okay. along. Okay, okay, so I take the foil. About two centimeters by four centimeters. So I have one here to just have you look at. Oh, it's just okay. a very small piece of foil. Okay. The less foil, the better. So the I more, just kind of tear it, or I... Uh, you can use the scissors to cut it. Okay. You can... The less foil, the better. The less foil, the better. Okay. Oh, so wait a second here. Let me get... I'm cutting... I can't cut in a straight line, but I think that looks and pretty good. And you can good. always okay. fix it when you're done. Okay. And then you're going to take your foil and fold it on itself so that you have two fold layers. It in half, okay. E. Can't always fold in a straight line either. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to fold it onto itself in a triangle. Oh, this is fun. I always do this when I'm bored. Um, and you can fold it as soon as it's down, then you can take the scissors and cut off any of the excess around the corner. Um, okay, you're good. good. Yeah. Okay, yeah, triangle. So the next part of it mm -hmm. is to take one of the paper matches, mm -hmm. and let me just trim mine so that it's. Even. I got to tell you, we've been setting off matches. They've been practicing here, and it smells like sulfur, which right. is oddly a really cool smell. And um, it is, it's mixed in with the gelatin at the end of the match, so that that is the actual, the fuel mm -hmm. is the sulfur. And then matches have some potassium or sodium usually, and they also have um, an oxidizer, which is needed to make the combustion. Right. Okay. okay, so the first thing you're going to do is put a hat on your match. Okay. Which is your triangle. Have, oh, oh I have to foil. do this. Okay, okay. Matt, hat on my match. So, I so just, you're just putting the match in, you're opening the oh, triangle. Hello. That's why we did the triangle. Hello. Then you're going uh -huh. to cap the match. Mm -hmm. And then what I like to tell the students when they're doing this is you, through the whole process of this, you want to see the outline of the match. Okay. So you want it to be so tight and so smooshed on there that you can see the match. Okay. And then you're outline going... Outline of the match, right. Okay. Yes. Okay. Then you're going to take one side and fold it over to make a flag. Oh, making a flag. So we go from tricorner hat to flag. And then again, you want to really push it on there and mm -hmm. make sure that you have all the excess out. If you have a lot of air chambers built onto this, mm -hmm. then the propulsion won't work as well because it's going to seep out of all those places. Okay. So the tighter um, you can wrap it onto there, um, the better it will be. And then you're going to just take the other end and continue to wrap continue it around. Wrap. Okay. That makes perfect sense. And again, by the time you get done, so you should be able to still see the match okay. shape. So no air. We want this to be a vacuum. Correct. Essentially. Okay. Okay. And then this is probably the most difficult part of the whole thing, mm -hmm. which is to make the thrust chamber. And I'll show you on mine. You can't poke a hole in the foil, but you have to wiggle this down Underneath. so that it goes all the way up to the top of the match, but doesn't pierce the foil. Okay. And then you're just smushing the edges of 
the foil so that it makes a clear um, line and then you pull it out. Okay, so you so, need a you need a hole, but you know, okay. So you, so you need to follow the big. match all the way up to the head of the match without piercing the foil. And as soon as you know you're up at the top, then you want to just smush the sides of that so that you're making a clear path for the smoke to come out. Okay. I'm not sure I know why when I'm up, up at the top. That's the problem. But You, you are. You can see okay. just from the outline that you're at the top. And okay. then just follow your finger along the edges of that. Mm -hmm. And then when you're... Right, you can pull that okay, needle out. Pull the needle out. And then you are ready to launch. <gasps> I'm ready to launch. Okay. So here's a paper clip for you, okay. and I'll show you what we need to do. We need to make a launch pad. So you want to open the paper clip up so it looks like an alligator's mouth. Oh, okay. Cool. I do that when I'm bored too. <laughs> okay. And then you open, open the edge to make the platform to support what's about to happen, and uh, then you're going to place it on the foil. Excellent. Okay. Then you will lay thrust chamber up. Thrust chamber up, which is what we just created with that, that you hole. Just created. Okay. And you're going to place it uh, on your launch pad. See, this is. Uh, and then I'm going to put my safety. This is why I on. do this rather than letting the experts do this because I'm totally incompetent. Okay, good. Okay. So and then you're going to. Then we light them. Here we go. Strike okay. the match, and then the flame needs to be right at the top. Oh, let me see that one went sideways. That okay. one was a dud. Well, let's see if I can do, if mine was better here. Let's see. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, there you go. It went about <laughs> four inches. Good. Correct. Okay. So then, um, and what's happening here is Newton's second law of motion um, and also Bernoulli's principle, which is that when you have this high pressure area, which is the top because it's covered, mm -hmm. and then the low pressure area, which would be our classroom, um, it's always going to be the powered from back to the bottom. So the smoke pushes it and propels it into the air okay. and allows it to move. And we have some other ones that are made. Um, and like I said, because you're working with matches, mm -hmm. these are brand new this morning. Um, things that can come into play is the moisture in the air, if the matches have been sitting in a house for a while, may mm -hmm. not mat work, mm -hmm. um, but also just that they're matches, so you have different um, tips on them, depending okay. on where they are, and you can just continue to make them. They should go anywhere from, sometimes they'll stay in the launch pad, sometimes they'll stay on the table, and then there's some that will go 10 feet. If they're, the chamber is made tight and well, it should be fine. Okay. Should we, should we light this one and see? Yeah, really. Let's check it out. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. Yeah! <laughs> Look at that! <laughs> Woo! It went off the table. And if you, and I'm 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 assuming that if you angle this a little higher, that it might just it might go up. Correct. Okay. And the with Newton's law, the mass depends on the acceleration. So the more mass you have, which would be the more foil, mm -hmm. or if you try to wood match, um, the more it takes to move it. When you go up because of gravity, mm -hmm. you have an opposing force. So again, the more upright it is, the less it will go because oh. it needs more force to get as high. So okay. if so you aim it straight out, mm -hmm. and you can change your launch pad, um, which Joe and Charlie will talk to you about some okay. kind of modifications you can do with these as well. But the more you alter things, if you try less foil, there's also brands of foil that are a little thinner mm. than the one we're using. That will change the mass. The less mass, the farther it should go. Okay. Here we go, gonna start a commotion. Rapping about Newton's third law of motion. Every action has an equal and opposite friend. Another force that comes out the other end. Rockets use us to fly out into space. It might look easy, but that's not the case. It takes a lot of energy to send missiles on attack, because half of its energy is lost going out the back. The larger the object, the more force it needs. That's why it is harder to move a tree than its seeds. If you try to throw a football, it's harder to pass. Because comparing to a golf ball, it's got more mass. 
entire Earth has a special attraction. Plays a big part in the forces transaction. The name is gravity and is not in your fag. If you want to get around it, you can't, so too bad. The world sucks you in, but the ground pushes back. It's a non-moving force that has no slack. The force of combustion compels these rockets. The powerful and dangerous that fit in your pockets. His name is Isaac Newton, and he's a really smart guy. Third law of motion would never lie. There you go, folks. Science and rap music go together. If you want to see the words to the rap, sc scroll down, and we've got them here. You guys can do the rap. You can do the science experiment. Be sure to videotape them and put them on our YouTube site, and, and we will feature you on ChicagoParent.com. In the meantime, we've learned about Isaac Newton's second and third law. We've learned about combustion. We've learned about propulsion and Bernoulli's principle. You can look all of these things up. But meanwhile, just go light some matches. This is Kerry Kaufman for This is Science.